At this point in time, I'd like to call the Recreation Advisory Committee meeting to order. Would everyone please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? Roll call. Mr. Sims. Here. Ms. Webster. Oh, I'm here. <laughs> Ms. Gilroy. You, sorry. <laughs> Ms. Gilroy. Here. Mr. Paschal. Here. Ms. White is excused. Mr. Sunny Cobb. You have a quorum. At this point in time, we'd like to welcome Jim Sunny Camp to the actual board. So now you get to see things from this side. So welcome again. So um, at this point in time, has everyone had an opportunity to uh, look over the, meet, the, uh, the minute meeting, the minutes from last meeting? If you have, were there any corrections needed or? I would make a motion that we approve the minutes as written. Okay, is there a second? Second. All in favor of? Aye. 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 So the minutes stand approved as written without corrections. So we have unfinished business from uh, the last meeting was uh, item A, which was uh, Friendship Park Special Need Playground up Update. Would, would you mind getting us an update? Yes, due to the current projects that the city is working on, uh, I don't know if uh, the committee recalls from last month's meeting when the city manager was here talking about the pickleball courts, the Barber Street uh, handicapped restrooms, there's going to be paving at the community center due to these pending projects and the uncertainty of the ultimate costs for these respective projects, staff has decided that it's more prudent to hold off on this project until the fiscal year of 2018-2019. We want to make sure to devote the necessary resources for this project. We don't want to leave it hanging or start it and not be able to finish it. And not only that, but we do want to have some kind of a buffer, some kind of a cushion in case of any unforeseen expenses, such as these, uh, I don't know if you were able to review these, but such as these playground inspections that are going to be needing funds. Yes. So due to that, um, we, we've decided as staff to hold off on this project to be, because we realize it's a very important project. So we want to make sure to devote enough resources to, to complete it, and that'll be our top priority in fiscal year 2018, 2019. Okay. Are, are there any questions from the, the board? Are there any questions? I would just say it's a good idea if, we don't, if we're not in the position to make it and make it good, then wait. Okay. There's no further question. No further questions. We'll move on to the um, item B. And that's the playground inspection result. Yes, uh, I don't know if you had an opportunity to review all the inspection results for all of the playgrounds. Staff is currently in the process of correcting the most critical items, and staff will not rest until all of our playgrounds are compliant, ADA compliant, and everywhere else. I don't know if you also recall, but uh, these inspection results will be taken into consideration by the Treasure Coast Regional Planning Council because they're going to be helping us with the five-year capital improvement plan. So these results will be taken into consideration in hopes that you know they're they're included in that five-year capital improvement plan. Okay. Any, any questions from the committee? I do. So on some of those, you know, where I see where they're ranking from high to low priorities. Some, you know, some are different, I don't know, various standards of how bad or not bad, but under like so supporting structure. So for things like, you know, rusted through and potentially replace, and then so it's hard to visualize that based on what's written here versus. Is there pictures or what, I mean, so how are you guys matching up like what's written here and knowing what's a repair versus what's, you know, 
a bigger underlying issue of maybe trying to have to replace? And that's actually a very good question because they did include, it was probably a 240 some page mm -hmm. report that I tried to condense as much as possible into this Excel spreadsheet. They did include pictures. There was that ADA inspection. There was what was called a low frequency inspection that checked other things. And then there was the drop test. So with all of these playgrounds that were inspected, like I said, it was like a 245 page report. In each, of the, in each of these reports, there were pictures attached. So our public works department does have these pictures as well as these reports so that they can work from first priority down to number five. Okay. And then what happens in looking at and assessing it, so for example, what is, just for example, but not specific, say like a rusted step that needs replacing and then you get to look at that, that's, you can't, all right, now you can't, fix a rusted step, that means that it's really the foundation to the support, so now it becomes something on here that's replaced that really becomes something that is like replaced as to a small step, which actually becomes the structure. So how is that gonna work? So the, the fluctuation of the budget, knowing how to like maybe start afresh with, with a piece of equipment that may not be worth or safe to fix. <coughs> The way it works is each of the playgrounds, depending on how old or how new it is, much of the time, in fact, several times, I've ordered a step for such playground, or I've ordered a slide, and the box components, or what are they called, some box parts to where our public works department can install these steps. It's going to be depending on, and in fact, staff is working, I'm working on gathering the layouts for each of these playgrounds to determine, okay, are these still playgrounds for which they're still building parts so that we can just order the steps that are necessary because they're rusted. If it's not such a new playground where they're no longer making these parts, then it ultimately may have to end up being to where we have to order a new playground. So that's actually how we're working. Staff right now, as I stated, we're working on the number ones, high priority, which right now, um, Either, either the playground has been closed because we're, we're in the process of ordering the parts. And as we go, right now to be proactive, like I said, I am working on gathering the layouts. So that as soon as we get to that item, if we need to order a step, I already know, okay, yes, we can order a part because they're still building the parts for these, or that's a playground that's no longer you know, being made by the manufacturer. Okay, any other further, or the further questions from the, the committee? Well, I don't say. Okay. I do. I have one question, um, Ms. Hernandez. Just to be clear, who who actually did the assigning of the priority? Who uh, who allocated the numbers? Did they or you or compromise or have that work? No, that's actually another very good question. That was assigned by the inspector. They were the ones to determine this is the number one priority, this is a medium level, so it can be a number three. It was their determination that we're basing it on. Okay. If there's no further questions, at this time we're gonna close this portion of our meeting. We're gonna uh, open it up to citizen input on these two items. If there are any comments on item A or B from the citizens out there, public? And then once you come to the podium, could you uh, like uh, state your name and your address and direct all questions towards the, uh, the committee up here? Yeah, ben Hawker, City of Sebastian. Since we're now postponing or evaluating budgetary-wise the handicap playground, I had asked if there was any research done in the particular locale with where there's autistic children, et cetera, et cetera, in a higher use area than in back of our city hall here. Now, the city might somehow be able to do that. I don't know how, I can't do it, but it's, it may be the right place, it might be the wrong place. I don't have that answer. So, uh, 
We have a newsletter that goes out by the city manager. I don't know whether that might be an appropriate place to put a questionnaire in. And like I had said, in my neighborhood, there's about five autistic children. And we're way on the south side of town. It's a semi-burden for the wife or husband, whoever's the caregiver for that child, to travel that distance. So I know we might have a shift in the locale at a later date, but there is a possibility that it might get more use and activity, such as uh, the Barber Street Park area. There's quite a bit of activity. I made a mistake. I had said Easy Street one time based on where to put it, but that's a park that sees fairly high usage with a lot of children. It's also centrally located, not on the fringe of the city. So just consideration for maybe it helps, maybe it doesn't. And uh, that's about it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Well, I, think, I think it was reported that as of June 2nd, there still hasn't been any public input toward any input at all toward anything that we've requested for the special needs park. So we continue to make, through a public forum, to those citizens in Sebastian that want to have input to please do that. I mean, uh, other than that, I'm not sure how else, you, other than asking for input and putting it in public forums, you know, short of uh, running a list. I don't know how you'd run a list on people with special needs in the city unless you're identified. That's not something that's open to the city. That would be my comment. If I can uh, make a correction because, or I don't, maybe, I guess a clarification. At the last meeting, the committee decided to go ahead and leave the ADA playground at Friendship Park. And since then, we've asked to remove that public notice from Channel 25. Now, if the committee wants, we can go ahead and place it back on there since this project is now delayed. Mm -hmm. We can more than, um, we, we will be more than glad to do so. So might I make the suggestion that Anytime that there's any interaction with the public in around general matters, then have that an ongoing rolling uh, item that's mentioned at several public functions to help elicit. Even if it's something like, you know, uh, the city manager having or, or somebody, city council, and you're up in front of a group of people, like say, for example, Clam Bake Festival or something where you're just talking about different things that are happening, make it an addendum or an item issue that in reaching out to the public in a public forum, 4th of July, something like this. If you're interested, this is something that the city is working for in 2017, 2018, having a new special needs park. If you're at all interested, then please contact the city. So try to, if we can vary the points of contact to the public, then that might help. And the actual um, uh, informational piece that was on the television, was it there for about several, what, a month or so, or, or was it? Was it there for a month or a couple of months? It was close to a month. It mm -hmm. was June 2nd, and the last Parks and Rec Committee meeting was June 26th, yeah. so very close to a month. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, so is it feasible, I mean, not feasible, is it possible to try to, since the, uh, the project was put on hold, to be able to get it to be reappetized for a predetermined, predetermined period of time? Yes, staff okay. can, can do that. Okay, thank you so much for so that. So then we would discuss again putting it back here? or only discuss keeping it back here, the playground, if people have another thought. Yeah. Yeah. We're, I mean, uh, with having it re-advertised, I was thinking maybe someone may come forward and just give some input about, I guess, the usage or like uh, possible location and or who knows what the public may have in mind. Well, they haven't so far. Yeah, so it probably won't be any going forward too, but at least if we have an opportunity to be able to have it listed it may give an opportunity since it's being delayed a little bit. So my question is in the event nobody uh, from the public has any input, we'll just leave it as, as it is. is. Yes. That was the question. Yes, I would say. Okay, so uh, the public input portion of um, the unfinished business is, does no, are there anyone else wanna speak? If not, we're gonna close uh, that portion of the meeting and we're gonna resume our committee meeting. And we're gonna go with this, there's no new business so we're gonna reopen the floor with um, public input from the public. So 
can you come forward again, address all questions to the board members here, and uh, state your name and address. Uh, John Tenroge, 310 South Wimbro. I don't know if any of you got down to the park this weekend for the Christmas in July. It was quite a big success. You know, I think they raised pretty close to $4,000 down there, so it was a pretty good deal. So I worked down there as a volunteer. Okay, Easy Street Lights, they're still not working, Ms. Hernandez. You know that? Oh, oh okay, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, dog Park. Uh, I think we still have room for two more handicap spots by the fence where the two handicap spots are now. I think we can do that. There's parking enough room there. Right? Yeah, parking. handicap parking, yeah, <laughs> yes. Also, the car stops at the dog park. They still haven't been repinned yet. They need to reset and repinned before somebody gets hurt, and we're going to have some kind of a problem there. Yeah, because some of the pins are sticking out of the concrete, so they're going to have to get on them. The parking lot is a mess. They need to repave that whole parking lot with that whatever they use that. Uh, I guess it's crushed stone or something they put on there, but it is a mess. There's holes all over the place. My dead tree's still there. My dead shrubs are still there if everybody knows where I'm talking about. Behind my house, they've been there for six years and they've grown a total of two inches in two, six years, yeah. So I know uh, somebody said that they'd leave them go for a while yet, but I think enough's enough, six years, yeah. So that's all I got. Thank you. Thank you, John. Is there anyone, is there anyone else from the public that would like to speak? If not, we're gonna close this portion of the meeting. And like uh, staff matters. Staff matters have any comments? No, I have nothing at this time. Okay. Board committee members matters. We'll start with Sonny. Do you have any questions, statements? Um, yes, the handicap parking that John was talking about. This grassy area, <clears throat> there's a sidewalk just on the other side of it. So this might be a little bit dangerous putting handicapped parking where you're going to back out over a sidewalk. Um, does need more handicapped parking. There's two spots there. Um, I think we should go the other way rather than uh, this grassy area. The people are using it for handicap, and that's not, they're not supposed to park there, but even they, they still do. Um, but I feel if we put a handicap there, there's a sidewalk that people are going to back over, and I think that would be a safety issue. Um, <clears throat> uh, and also, the um, go to the dog park. Um, there's people going to the dog park before 6 o'clock in the morning, and it's dark. Um, one of the fire hydrants that was put in, it was dark, and a gentleman tripped over it, and he's the one I heard took it out. Um, and our ordinance in the city is, I think, I think it's seven o'clock. The noise ordinance starts at seven, and there, and there's people on the other side of the fence there that live there. And so we got dogs barking at six in the morning. I think that's kind of early. So uh, I would suggest maybe right now it's uh, listed uh, uh, dust till dawn. Uh, maybe change it to 7 in the morning uh, for the dog park people to go in and have their dogs barking and playing. Uh, that, that's just my suggestion. Um, and <clears throat> that's it. Thanks. Joanne? So I was looking at this report, and I think that's pretty good that there's only a few ones. There's only a few, there's a lot of playgrounds in this town, and there's only a few ones on this list. I, I'm impressed by that. So I think that's good. And that's all I have. Thanks. Corin? Yes, I would like um, to give a shout out to the Lions Club and to Kim Ellis for the uh, 4th of July festivities in this town. Um, they did a lot of work and a lot of volunteers and so on. And um, I just would like to get some recognition to go that way. Thank you. Yeah. Greg? 
I don't have anything specific at this time, but can I, can I ask Sonny a question? When, when you say you heard a gentleman took out the hydrant, so I, that's kind of a, that was kind of a little bomb there. You mean meaning like took it like that's the hydrant we were missing? It, it's, not, it's not a regular hydrant like you th the fire hydrant. This fire hydrant is only like a foot and a half. T it's a real short fire hydrant. It wasn't okay. the doggy hydrant that we were talking about before that got stolen. It was, no. it, was, it was a... Okay, I was just clarifying because okay. that's what I thought when you first said no, no. it. was oh, a hydrant okay. put into the park for the dogs to urinate on rather yeah. than the trees. Right. right. But this guy was in there like quarter to six. I mean, he's in there early and it's dark. Didn't, he tripped on it. And I heard that he's the one who took it out. All right. Well, well <laughs> so what does it belong to? My, my okay. comment would be like, you know, <laughs> confirmed versus, you know, rumors in a public forum of somebody like, if we know that, that that's a person, then that's something that we should get the, back. The, the fire hydrant's okay. gone. Okay. I know, I know. But I'm saying, like, <laughs> if we know who the person is, that's something that, like, that was a big deal on the day that the dog park flare-up that we had about missing pieces and that, you know, we did something nice to put something in there. Right. It's good. So if we know who it is, I think it's well, behooves I, us to get it back. And if we I, don't, I don't... I don't know who it is. Okay. It, it's just I've heard through the okay. grapevine. That's what I'm saying. It's just like it's you know, just um, careful on saying, I heard it's this person. Because if it's not, then that, you know, like that puts us in kind of a bad light. But, yeah, but if we knew, I would say that's something that we should try to venture to get back. Well, I, I agree with you. If we <laughs> okay. knew who it was, I, let's go after him because it's city property and it's... it's the, okay. I suggest you check the pond. Okay. I, Maybe you just caught me off guard, so I just want to clarify because I just I wasn't quite sure. <laughs> and then as far as you're saying about the, the, the differences or the suggestion about the time or the opening of the park, um, my only comment would be is if you come with a hard fixed time of like saying seven, just because of this fluctual, you know, the, the fluctuation of the time of year and versus when it's dark and when it's not dark, then, I mean, you get around that by saying dusk to dawn because when it is first light, people can enjoy the park. Whereas it, it's, it's not about the light. It's about the neighbors that live there and dogs barking early. Okay. I'm saying... Because so people take their dogs in, they take tennis balls in, and the dogs are playing and jumping and yelling and they're barking. Okay. Uh, and our noise ordinance starts at seven. Okay, so that that's so a I good feel, that's a good clarifying. Yeah, I comment. feel this is injustice to the people that live there. No, uh, that's my only point. Yeah, I, so I was again just clarifying. I don't I I don't have a vested one way, but just saying if if you're going to set a time, then be it like that that you're being res that we're the city's being respectful to people. Well, that in goes and around the city ordinance. A certain okay. time. So that's, that's the way good, I feel. Yeah, it's a good suggestion. I was just clarifying it. I think that's good. Okay. But most of the ordinance, I mean, we have several parks that's real close to neighborhoods also, and dust to dust. I mean, that, that's all, again, a city ordinance, so that's across the board everywhere. So that's, um, that's across the board. So that's, all. that's your only dog park. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's fine. That's, that's a, I mean, Corinne? Yes, hi. Um, one of the things that I've noticed, and I've been to the doggy park there um, six times now, and various days, various hours, and so on during the day. And as far as I keep hearing, we need more parking, we need more uh, special handicap parking and whatnot. Um, Any time I've been there, only of the six now, I've never noticed that there's a, a parking problem there at all. Uh, nor do I ever hear any escalating noise whatsoever from dogs and people and so on. Uh, I just want to give my perspective on this. Um, it's quite cr tranquil and so on. There's not a lot of noise that I could see, although I I've seen a volume of dogs, and the people are, I, a lot of people are listening to their music, they're reading, and so on. Um, it's not a noisy environment that I have seen as of yet. The other thing I wanted to make a mention is when I first heard the um, hydrant, I've been there and I've, I, there's a little hydrant that almost looks like a toy. I think that's what the, the young man at the end is talking right. about. It's, um, it's some sort of a, 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 it's almost a mock of a, uh, of a, of, of a professional official. So I just did, I wanted to clarify that. It's not a real hydrant that 
the city's responsible for or any of that. Anyway, thank you. Yeah. Marguerite, so if there's something that the city didn't put in there, is it possible that we can probably have city staff to probably put it back out, pull it out? Because I know, because we're trying to place items inside of there that the city uh, bring in. So that would that be something that we can have the city to look at? The city actually purchased two, as Ms. Gilroy states, mock fire hydrants. Not official, nothing. We purchased them at their request uh, during one of mm -hmm. the parks and rec meetings during public input. We purchased two. That same week, one of these fire hydrants was removed, was lost, yeah. was. And I believe it was actually, both of them were anchored to the floor. So, but this is, this was something that the city purchased, and now we're down to one. Okay, so the one that's in there, the one that's in there now, the, the one that's existing now is the one that uh, the city purchased. Yes, okay, so one uh, of the two. Okay, so that's good. So was that the one you said he tripped over? No, that's the one that he tripped over. <laughs> oh, but the one that's in there now. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> there's, there's, there's still one, and it's in the small dog park. Okay. Small dog park. Sorry. Okay. And Corinne, if you haven't been there when it's noisy, it's because my dogs weren't there. Okay. And have you been there at six o'clock in the morning? Well, see, that's that's when. Well, that's when the dogs are there barking early. Okay. And as far as the, uh, um, Mr. Hernandez, the uh, the handicap parking. That's something that the city would look at, or I mean, uh, not the city, but the parks would look at, the parks department would look at and see if there's a need for additional parking, so. Yes, and it's actually a good thing you're mentioning it because I know Frank Watanabe, who was our city engineer, and also I believe he was the, the liaison for the ADA advisory committee. He went down to the dog park and performed an ADA evaluation. This wasn't it, it cannot be more than two months ago. Yes. And he looked at parking, and he looked at the restrooms, and he looked at everything in reference to ADA. He determined that it was ADA compliant. And not only that, but I also heard from, I cannot remember, but somebody else in staff mentioning that as a ratio, we needed to have one parking spot per every 25 regular parking spots. For ADA? So, one ADA parking spot per 25. Okay. So even based on that, I believe we are ADA compliant at the dog park. Okay, so that's pretty I'd like to make a comment too. The grassy area where the, this one person parks, all right, the two handicapped places are full. On the other side of that is empty, but he'll still park in the grass. So there's parking spaces available, but this person still parks in the grass. Okay. And, and so it's, uh, I, I feel it should be some kind of, that grassy area should be uh, marked off or something where nobody's parked in there. So is there any signage out there? I mean, so, so well, some, a, some a sign or on grass, right? make it so that they can't park there. Because like I said, there's a sidewalk on the other side. And I feel it's a safety uh, you don't back out where there's, you know, sidewalk there, people walking. Uh, there has been uh, people parked in a handicap area, another person parked the illegal across from it in the grass, and this person backed out and hit, uh, well, actually hit one of the city's trucks. So when, you, when you're parking where you're not supposed to, it makes things not flow right. That's all. And those are uh, those pins that sticking up from those papers. So, so, so the things that are the George, the John mentioned. So the, those pins, the the, the rebar is coming up. So that we, we can have parts to look at those, also. And other than that, I have no further questions about anything going forward. So we have um, the next meeting. It looks like it's going to be on the what, that's, the, that's August the twenty eighth, August twenty eighth. Everyone's good for that date, that date? For August 28th? I actually, uh, sorry for interrupting. Okay. I have a Parks and Recreation Conference starting August 28th in Orlando that will be lasting the whole week. I want to, I want it to leave it up to the committee whether to maybe reschedule the meeting to one week before, one week after, or go ahead and wait being that it's summer for the September meeting. I'd like to leave that up to the committee, of course. Any suggestion about 
canceling August meeting or um, moving it up one week or any suggestions? If you move it up a week to the 21st, I'm on vacation the week of the 21st, so I would not be able to do that. So that's just my personal schedule. Any suggestions? I, as far as I suggest maybe holding off on August. It's kind of slow right now. Because quiet. Because there's almost nothing to me. Cause, cause I second that. Yes. August vacation. Okay, yeah. so pretty close. So like September, so the next set meeting for September would be? It would be September 25th. 25th, Okay, yep. 25th. Okay. Okay, September, so our next meeting, meeting date would be September 25th. Thank you. Same time. Other than that, no further questions, meeting is adjourned.